everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to another episode of Dye Pot PS. Today we will look at the difference between dyeing yarn in three different colors, one at a time to layer these colors on top of one another, with some yarn where we mix all the colors together in advance and then dye the yarn in one step. This is something that I've done before, but I looked at it with two colors versus three and I thought that I'd have some fun. Now to make this comparison even more extreme, we are going to layer three primary colors together and see where we end up. Now, if you layer a yellow, red, and blue, you're not necessarily going to end up with a brown. Different dye colors have different uh, lo intensity levels, so even if you're using a one-to-one -one ratio of these three colors, you could end up with something that is still purple-leaning or green-leaning. It really does depend. I have many different videos where I have looked at three primary colors, whether it is dip dyeing into primaries to create a rainbow or layering them on top of one another with resist like I did in my melted wax colorway. But today we're really not using any resist and we really are trying to layer them all on top of one another. So we'll see what this midpoint really is. Before we go and talk more about the project, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Chemnitz Fiber patrons, including Stacy Pace, Don Jans, Karen Siegel, Jessica Parco, Elena Carnes, Tamara Svanez, and the rest of the Fiber patrons. You'll see some of their names on the screen right now. Patreon is a really fun platform where you can help support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I offer some behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to the Dye Pop PS series, and more. You can find more information over at patreon.com slash Chemnitz, and you can find the link down in the video description. But also, please make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. This is the biggest way that you can help support the content here. So now, let's go dye some yarn. <laughs> I am pre-soaking 600 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn in some plain tap water with no additional acid for about an hour before we get started. This yarn base is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. It's a base I use all the time and I really, really love it because it soaks up color so wonderfully. If you'd like to learn more about the yarn base, the removable nylon zip ties I've added onto the yarn, or any other tools and equipment I use in my videos, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. Today we are going to play with three primary colors from Dharma Acid Dyes. Brilliant Yellow, Deep Magenta, and Caribbean Blue. I have not yet done a triad color mixing exercise with these three colors. So I honestly don't know which way it would lean. Uh, I don't know if the blue is going to be more intense or the pink. The yellow is almost never the most intense color <laughs> when we do this kind of exercise. So uh, I don't think the yellow is going to make as big of an impact. So I expect things may lean either a little bit pinkish or a little bit purplish would be my hypothesis. But we won't know until we try. So let's go ahead and mix up these colors. Before I got started measuring out the dyes, I put on my P100 respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and all of the tools and equipment that I am using for this video are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for the preparation of food. My plan is to use a total of one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. So I'm going to need a total of two grams of dye of each of these colors which I weighed out in one gram batches, so that way I would be able to combine three of the colors together right now and then keep the other three completely separate. And again, I don't know how these different colors are going to come together. I don't know if the mixture of all three is gonna lean a little bit purple, a little bit of pink, maybe a little bit brown if the yellow is more intense than I thought. But that is something we can see and maybe get a little feel for once we are done mixing up these colors. I dissolved the dyes in hot tap water, but I didn't worry about the volume that I was using to dissolve these dyes in because since we're going to be kettle dyeing, it doesn't really matter the total volume because we're going to be adding all of the dye 
of each of these colors onto our yarn. So it is the total grams of dye that makes a bigger difference than the volume that we have them dissolved in. Some of these colors dissolve better than others. I found that on one of them the Caribbean blue got a little bit um, chunky, but it is slowly dissolving off of that one. The uh, Brilliant Yellow looks almost translucent and the deep magenta is fairly opaque. There's some particles in there, but we will be dissolving the dyes in a lot of hot tap water before we go ahead and add uh, the yarn to it. Hopefully this cup is big enough. There's a tiny bit left in there. I'm gonna have to rinse all of these out and that's got most of that. So, ooh, it's looking very teal right now. Well, I cannot tell what color it's going to be yet. I'm going to go rinse out, and I have about 100 milliliters maybe, but I'm going to go rinse out these three cups. It is definitely worth and important to remember that equal proportions based on grams of color does not mean that there's equal uh, amount of potency of each of the pigments. And so that's why if you were going to mix those three colors together on their own, you might get uh, it with paint, you, you know, you would theorize you would get it brown, but ooh, wow. Okay, that looks black. Wow, that is like a black or a blue. Whoo, we may have more balance than I thought. I want to quickly take a look at all of these colors. So we've got our yellow. Looking very yellow. Our pink. Our blue. And then with the other hand, here is the combination of all three. That is wild. I believe the mixture is probably gonna break. It does seem like if it's not gray or black, it is maybe gonna lean a little bit purple or blue, but this feeling so neutral is way more balanced than I expected, which I guess when I do those triad color mixing exercises, in the center, I have three colors that are two parts, one color, and then one part of the other two. There isn't a center spot that is an equal mixture of all three colors. So that is important to keep in mind. But this is cool. This is really cool. And I'm very excited to see how this will turn out. In my stainless steel dedicated dye pot, I have 32 cups of water. And I am going to add, I think, just three. Ah. This is where I'm waffling, because when I do the colors one after another, I am going to want to use the same dye bath. I am going to heat this up before I add the yarn. Um, okay, let's go ahead and do six. Four, five, six. This should be enough acid for all of the colors to strike. Um, and now I am going to add our mixture that is one gram of each of those three colors it's actually looking pretty well dissolved but I am gonna go and rinse this out or at least what was left in there diluted does look a little bit bluish to me um, hopefully this isn't too much of that Caribbean blue oh dear that would be sad but now I am going to take this over to the stove and start heating it up. And once we are hot, then we'll add the yarn. And since I want to use the, stain, the same dye pot for all of the dyeing, I'm going to go ahead and add these other three colors to mason jars and I'll rinse these plastic cups out. Uh, these are sturdier and less likely to tip over. <laughs> And so that is why I am doing it that way. I think that if I were to layer these colors as like a cool vat, then there would definitely be some diff or be some more similarities between them because we would be able to get more even color coverage 
overall in all of the samples that and so today since we're adding the yarn to the pot hot that is going to allow for more tonal variation more dark and light patches on the yarn and therefore we will likely see more variation in the hues from when we layer these three individually than when we uh, do this first dyeing where we have everything all together. This took so long to heat up. I actually just put the heat on low. To, I was like, oh, I'll make it less steamy, forgetting that when you have this much water, that doesn't really work. <laughs> and now I'm coming in with 300 grams of yarn, which I have folded in half. I'm going to dunk it in. And I'm here with a spoon to move through. Ooh, wow. This color is gorgeous. I think it is absolutely breaking. I am seeing more like red and more turquoise patches. This is gorgeous. And it's fun when a mixture like this will still break. So what I'm making sure to do as I lift the yarn and lower it is to separate the skeins from one another to try to avoid having white patches. But that turquoise color is gorgeous. I think that maybe the red struck really quickly. All right, I'm now gonna leave it in. So, <laughs> this broke incredibly. Now, we could have something that feels very similar because we have multiple hues in this yarn from the way that the colors broke. But when we layer the colors on one at a time, we might also see something a bit different in that we could see, like here we're seeing these more bright teal patches, but we have the chance of seeing some more maybe orange or pink or purple um, in with the deeper color. So that is a possibility as well. But now I'm gonna set a timer, I think for 30 minutes and then we'll come back. While we wait, I also figured it's worth giving a little reminder about what is color breaking. When you have a mixture that has different pigments, they may absorb to yarn at different rates. Different colors absorb fastest at different temperatures and different pH. And so when you have a mixture that looks like one color and you see it split into multiple different hues, that is known as breaking. And since we mixed three primary colors together, we know that we have three different dye molecules in there. So some of what we're seeing is likely breaking uh, right now, and we will see some things that may look similar when we layer the colors, but we're gonna wait and yeah, see what we end up with. Because again, whether the differences are a little more subtle or a little more extreme, by doing this in one step versus, I guess, three steps, uh, those minor differences may help you get the color that you want on the quantity of yarn that you want. And so this all-in-one pot is technically faster because, well, when as soon as this is done, it's done, we're not gonna remove the yarn and do this again. But at the same time, maybe we want less light and dark. So there's reasons to go either way. <laughs> So the colors on our paper towel have dried a little bit and in the darkest color here, you can really see that breaking that is similar to what we're seeing on the yarn. And so that is fun. It's been 20 or 30 minutes and we still have a fair amount of blue left in the pot. This is not surprising because of Caribbean blue and it's the reason why blue will be the last color that I do once we when we layer them. But what I'm gonna do now is I am going to turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool completely, which hopefully I will not regret because there are times with blue acid dyes that that is something I regret that I'm like, I should leave it in the pot, but <laughs> we're gonna go with this. And once it's cool, we'll come check back in. The yarn has cooled off a lot. And now I am going to remove it. You can see that there's a tiny bit of color left, but most of it is in the yarn. And this actually reminds me of, say, Wilton's Black, almost. It's a little more teal at the end, 
but we've got this very like deep red and teal that is really pretty. But anyway, I am going to let this cool completely so then we can go wash it. And then in the meantime, I'm going to reset this pot so that way we can start, I think, with the yellow. We are going to go yellow, pink, blue because uh, I am expecting that the pink will sort of overtake the yellow a fair amount. And I'm curious how orange it'll look but I am going to rinse this container with a little bit more water and we're now going to get this nice and hot. All right, we are nice and hot and so I'm going to come in with the yarn sort of folded and quickly go in like I did last time. And now I am picking up the yarn and sort of separating it to get reasonable coverage all around. The coverage isn't gonna be perfect. It is gonna be tonal, but we definitely have some of the yellow all the way around. And so now I am going to let this sit for, uh, let's try 15 to 20 minutes and we'll come back and check. But even if there's a little bit of yellow left in, at that point, we can proceed to the next step. It's okay if there is a little bit of color left because most of it will strike pretty quickly. All right, let's see. It's been a tiny bit over 15 minutes. And oh, that's looking really clear. So right now with this color, I would say that we've got, we have a very lovely yellow tonal. And don't forget, it's just one gram of dye that we have here on 300 grams of yarn. And I think what I'm seeing on the monitor isn't even as bright as I see this in some spots here. So this is really only, you know, a 0.33% depth of shade, but I'm gonna set this aside to cool for a bit. And we're gonna set up the pot for the pink. Here is our deep magenta. And I am going to go rinse the, oh, there's not actually much in here, but I'm still going to rinse it out. Quick little dip in there. Did it nicely. And now I don't need the yellow to cool completely, but I do want it to cool enough so that way I can comfortably handle it. So just a couple of minutes. All I like to do when I'm layering colors is I like to move the zip tie down a bit. Uh, it's not that it's going to be like perfectly moved down the same amount for all of them, but by shifting it, it means that uh, we're more likely to get decent coverage over the yarn. And so now going into the pink, uh, I'm going to take the yarn, it's folded in half, and once again, we're going in, trying to get decent coverage. And again, I am picking it up and opening these up to move them around because when they're stuck together, that gives a little bit of resist and means we get a little bit less coverage over the whole thing. And so um, they are all going to be a little different. I think this red is striking really quickly. I mean, wow! <laughs> I am just going to go ahead and leave this in the pot for about 10 minutes. How quickly this struck shouldn't be a huge surprise. Given what we saw when we had all three of the colors combined, that it looks like it looked there like the red struck first. But uh, I'm going to let this sit for, I think, just 10 minutes. Then we'll remove it and prep for the blue. Okay, I am now going to take this out and we're going to set up for the blue. So right here, this is actually a gorgeous, gorgeous sunset colorway. I would say the pink is very, very dominant over the yellow in that I feel like this is a very pink colorway with some hints of orange versus orange with hints of pink. But there are still some spots where we do really see that yellow coming through. So I'm gonna add the blue now. 
And I'm gonna rinse this out. Okay, and once again, I am going to let our yarn cool off at least a bit. But you can see how we've got still yellow sections in here, pink and orange. So already we're starting off with more tones in here than we did the first time because we really have mostly just two tones on the yarn we did all at once. And here there's already a lot of dimension before we go into the blue. So I imagine we'll see lots of colors and probably some good greens, but we'll see. I'll be back in a couple minutes. All right, well, we're still pretty warm, but I feel like I can at least move this. And what I think I wanna do this time is instead of folding it in half to put in, I might just dip straight down because the yarn is warm and I think that's going to give me a little bit more control over it. So instead of having these like separate, having these all together, I can have them separated a bit more. So I think that's what I'm going to do this time for this next layer. Okay, let's do it. So I am going to... I feel okay doing it this way this time for this color and I'm going in real fast getting a good dunk and then separating and coming down and so I feel okay doing it this way because we know that those blues take a bit longer to strike and I'm trying to separate and move these colors and I will say I see turquoise I see that purple, but we'll, we'll compare them at the end, but I think I'm seeing more green and blue sort of separately in here than what I saw before. I think it's really based on the coverage that we had with the pink. Now, we know this color is gonna take a bit longer to absorb onto the yarn, so what, so what I'm gonna do is let this sit on with the heat on for 20 minutes. Then I'm going to turn off the heat and let things cool down completely. And I'm gonna to try to do a check-in somewhere in there. This is really, really pretty. Uh, and I would say I'm definitely seeing more tones in here than before. One of these days, I'll be able to do one of these where the color doesn't break as extremely. <laughs> but let's see. We still have a, little, well, a fair amount of blue left. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool completely. The dye bath has cooled off completely and I don't see any color left. Ooh, I see red purples, blue purples, reds, greens, blues. I see lots of colors in here. So now let's go wash the yarn. So here is our layered colorway, which we did in three steps, versus our all-in-one pot colorway. Uh, and, I mean, the difference, the big difference, is that you see different colors. Uh, we see more colors in our layered one. Now, to be fair to myself, let's see. Well, that's not bad. I've got six stains that I'm missing here, so that's not bad at all. Uh, so to be fair to myself, we ended up with a mixture that broke again. <laughs> so if I was gonna have something that didn't break, let's add some dish soap, then we may have something that is a little more amplified because since the blue absorbs so much slower than the other colors on our non-layered colorway, we still see like multiple hues in here. We still have those sort of reddish purples and teals. But what we don't have are the brighter greens and then some of the bluer purples that we see when we layer this. So there are similarities and differences, but what we're not seeing is even with the addition of soap and all six skeins of yarn, I'm not seeing, I'm 
seen like the tiniest hint of color, but this isn't bad for a blue at all, and especially not for six skeins of yarn, uh, which is pretty heavy to deal with all at once. <laughs> so I'm just grabbing any three to set aside to help me um, rinse out. But yeah, that's, I would say that that's basically nothing. I'll do one more rinse. All right, this is with just three skeins, and I think we've got two, or one layered, and two non. I'll be able to tell the difference pretty easily. All right, we are seeing some color come out. It is a little easier to tell now that I can actually like squeeze and the yarn can move a little bit. So again, that's not very bad, but I am gonna go ahead and rinse it off camera. And if it doesn't seem to resolve, I'll come and chat with you. But I'll let you know when it's clear. Checking back in, I just did, even though the bleeding really isn't bad, I went ahead and did a center pulse soak, um, which actually made it a little worse, but hopefully that'll mean that it'll be better because it pulled out all of that dye. So I am legitimately starting to wonder with some of these blues, when I feel like I'm done and there's blue left, I tend to let that blue absorb as it's cooling off. But then I feel like that's the blue that comes back out again. So I'm wondering if, and I have no idea if this would help, is if after that 20 to 30 minutes when there's still blue left in the pot, maybe I should just remove the yarn and say, okay, we're good. And not use that little bit that's left. So please let me know down below what you think. See, this is the, well, it's not the problem, but see now, with, after the center ball, the bleeding is worse. <laughs> oh dear, all right. I'm gonna keep rinsing and I'll check back in. I was rinsing, it got a lot lighter, and then I just popped a tiny bit of vinegar in and that took care of it. So I am gonna rinse some of the vinegar back out so it doesn't have as much scent, but that did resolve our bleeding and the yarn's been soaking in here for like 15 minutes. So anyway, I'm gonna wash the other one similarly, put all the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. And can you tell the difference between the yarn that we dyed in one pot versus the one where we layered the colors on in three different steps. We did see color breaking, but when we layered the two colors, we have something where we have this teal and then these bits of red. This feels very much like black food coloring in a way that is very eerie to me. And this yarn with the layers, we feel more rainbow. There are only a few little hints of some yellow and orange. It's mostly, we've got purples, blues, greens, and then this deep burgundy. I don't really see a lot of brown. There might be some areas that feel a little bit brown leaning, but overall, uh, it is very multicolored. If I look at the three different skeins we dyed all in one pot, they feel very similar. But I do know that the placement of the more saturated sections versus the lighter, which is a bit in air quotes, but the lighter teal areas is random and will vary from skein to skein. So, and you can almost say it with me now, but if you're gonna use multiple of these in one project, I recommend alternating skeins to blend them together so you don't see a harsh shift in the colorways because even when things are dyed in one pot, when they are hand dyed, you can have dye lot-esque variation from skein to skein. I don't know what I expected from blending the three colors together, but this isn't quite what I expected and I really love it. I think it is gorgeous mm -hmm. and I could see myself mixing this up again in the future. In our blended colors, only one of them I think really has a little bit more yellow and orange hint. I think these other two have the colors a bit more blended, but that depends on where the colors were in the pot and maybe if I didn't get a much dye around the zip tie. It is interesting that we still have this contrast of 
brights and really, really dark colors. And it was really the addition of the blue that brought those super deep patches. Everything with the yellow and pink felt bright overall. And, I don't know, it's just pretty fun. For three colors to pick for this type of project, starting with three pi primaries, a magenta, a turquoise, and a yellow, is pretty much as extreme as one could start. If you picked three colors that were closer together, say even a really deep purple, a navy, and a black, you would still see different hues, but because they are all more dark and muted to begin with, you would have what felt like more even coverage throughout the yarn. So you don't have to go for extreme different colors for this type of project. You can start with things that are a lot more similar to give just a little bit more hue and tone versus a tonal that was all one color. Certainly you have seen me layer different colors on top of one another in various other projects, but I think there's only one other time where I did this type of side by side, mix everything together, do all at once versus layer them one at a time on top of each other to compare that. So if you would like to see me do this again and use colors that have less contrast, Sticking with more analogous colors, uh, let me know down below and let me know what colors you would like to see me play with for this type of project in the future. I want to give another huge, huge thank you to all of the Chemnitz patrons for not only voting for this theme for this month's Dye Pop PS episode, but for supporting all of the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And again, if you want to learn more about the Chemnitz Patreon, you can find the link down in the video description. One of these days, when I do this, the color that I do all in one pot won't break. <laughs> I think that when I did, well, it must have been oranges that broke a little bit. I think that that was a lot harder to see the difference. And here you can definitely see how many more colors we have when we layered them on individually. I think there's no question about that there. I'm just amused and entertained that it broke so well. That deep magenta strikes really, really fast, which is very good to know moving forward. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I always post at least twice a week on Tuesday and Friday mornings, but in addition to that, we have monthly Die Along live streams, unboxings, and special bonus content like this Die Pop PS series. Thank you so much for watching.